In this video, we're going to do something completely different and give you a psychological analysis of the two ultimate candidates for president of the United States in 2016. On the Democratic side, we're going to have Hillary Rodham Clinton, who is a pure psychopath. And on the right side, the Republican side, we're going to have Donald J. Trump, who is a pure narcissist. Now, in this video, we're going to give you a psychological analysis with all the sources in the description below to make up your own mind. First of all, Let's look at Hillary Rodham Clinton. When it comes to Hillary Clinton, when she was asked on national television if she has ever lied to the American people, she straight out blankly told she has never lied. Never lied. Again, just a pure, outright, manipulative statement that only a psychopath would say, thinking that they are outside of the law, thinking that they could say and do anything without any scrutiny at all. A pure illusion of grandeur and being above the law. Now let's look at Hillary Clinton's relationship with one of her coziest allies, Saudi Arabia, where women need a chaperone, where they can't drive a car, they can't wear makeup that shows off their beauty, they can't interact with men, they can't even go swimming, and the list goes on and on. Saudi Arabia is a despotic, human rights violating country that sends barrel bombs to civilian communities in Yemen, and of course those barrel bombs were actually provided by Hillary Clinton when she was a part of the State Department. At that same time, Saudi Arabia donated tens of millions of dollars to Hillary Rodham Clinton, again, manufacturing, letting these deals pass through, celebrating them in her emails that have been released, showing no regard for human rights at all or human life, facilitating more utter chaos and suffering around the world. She is also in her earlier career, this has been a recurring statement, also stood behind her defense of a rape suspect. This is an actual real story. In 1975, a 12-year-old was raped by a 42-year-old man. Hillary Clinton actually volunteered to be his lawyer. In court, Hillary told the judge that uh, the victim made up the rape story because the victim enjoyed fantasizing about older men. Hillary got the rapist freed in 1980. She gave an interview where she admitted she knew he was guilty and she laughed about it. Again, no regard at all for human life and human suffering, only pushing her career further. That's why she was also as a board member of Walmart. In her earlier career, when she was walk working on the Watergate investigation, her former boss said she was not only complicit in unethical behaviors, but she was an outright liar. I confronted Hillary Clinton face to face, one on one, and I asked her about some of the key decisions she made as Secretary of State, one of them supporting al-Qaeda, al-Nusra, ISIS in Libya and Syria in, over to, in order to overthrow Gaddafi and Bashar al-Assad. She laughed in my face, but it was ultimately her decision that gave weapons, that gave money, that financed the rise of ISIS in the Middle East. She laughed in my face because of it. When she was asked about the death of Gaddafi, she on national television said, we came, we saw, we conquered, he died. And she laughed like a psychopath in this video on national television when a leader that she was behind overthrowing was being tortured and murdered in the middle of the street. There's gruesome videos of the former leader of, of Libya, Gaddafi, being utterly tortured, gutted, butchered in the middle of the streets, and the psychopath who signed off on it was laughing because of this. Let's look at Hillary Clinton's treatment of the people around her, the service men and women who protect her. According to a state trooper who said good morning to Ms. Clinton, Ms. Clinton responded, quote, fuck off, I have to see you shit kickers every day, I'm not going to talk to you too. A Secret Service member said this, about her that she said, and I quote, I don't give a fuck about them, get them out of here and get them away from me. Again, talking about the people who protect her. Now when it comes to this whole email scandal, Hillary Clinton has always said that she was purely innocent, that she did nothing wrong, 
by violating the law, setting up her own private email server and the classified information she had as Secretary of State was safe. This, just as of now, has come out to be a huge lie as the hacker Guccifer, who is on trial in the United States, said that he was able to actually hack Hillary Clinton's email server and get the classified information. And now the FBI investigation that's going on against Hillary Clinton is looking into the fact if Hillary Clinton actually did disclose classified information by not following the law and setting up her own email. And of course, another outright pure lie by Hillary Rodham Clinton. And now hashtag dropout Hillary is actually trending on Twitter, showing again, pure pathological lying signs. She has no regard for the law. She has no regard for social norms. She has no regard for the rights of others. And she has a failure to feel remorse or guilt. She is extremely manipulative and lacks emotional empathy. And when it comes to torture, when it comes to crime, when it comes to rapists, she shows no emotional empathy, but pure pleasure and pure laughter, showing how she is an outright manipulative psychopath. Now let's talk about Donald J. Trump. And to examine Donald J. Trump, we have to look at the relationship that he had with his father, Fred Trump. Earlier on in his life, Trump was actually sent to military school at the age of 13. He was very isolated from his parents. Obviously, Fred Trump was a busy businessman in New York City, working on a lot of businesses and being extremely busy. Family friends of the Trumps described the relationship between Trump and his father as friendly, but not precisely working together. She says, quote, the two of them together in the same room was very strange. She says, quote, they were both talking supposedly to each other, but I was sure neither heard what the other was saying. They talked right past each other, showing yet again this distance, this isolation of Donald Trump being raised by himself without a pure father figure. He saw him more as a competitive figure than as a real father in his life. And the Guardian article goes on saying, in fact, every aggressive word Donald Trump ever directed at his father seemed to have been about business. When Fred Trump died, Donald Trump gave a cheerful quote to his father in the New York Times obituary, focusing on the way his dad had never wanted to expand into Manhattan. Trump said, and I quote, it was good for me. He said, you know, being the son of somebody, it could have been competition to me. This way I got Manhattan all to myself. This is an extremely weird statement, especially when it comes to his father just dying moments ago, him talking about the competitive nature that they had between each other because Trump's father was never there for him when he was growing up. And that's why Trump has an insecurity feeling within himself. And in order to escape that insecurity feeling, he is more grandiose. He, that's why he resorts to name calling. That's why he has a runaway ego because he has something to prove that he has never proved to his father who is not alive today. And that's why Donald Trump put, puts his name on everything, whether it's buildings, whether it's billboards, whether it's stakes, whether it's water. Trump's name is virtually on everything because he is trying to escape the insecurity of trying to prove himself to his father. And that's why he's trying to prove himself to everyone else. He is a natural people pleaser and he wants to keep his legacy and his name and the Trump name with him since his nature with his father was not good in any way, shape or form. And that's why we have Donald Trump being the person that he is. Now in this 2016 election, the vote is pretty much going to come down to a narcissistic celebrity who has daddy issues versus a pure psychopath who laughs and celebrates misery and death. Obviously, the safer choice for the American public, if you were forced to choose, would be the narcissist. But ultimately, the real answer and the real solution would be for humanity to get its act straight, not to depend on other people to be their leaders, not to give up their power by voting to someone else, but to actually empower themselves and stand up for themselves as human beings and not rely on anyone else to be their leader. This is ultimately what all of us psychologically need to do. Now, of course, I am not a psychologist in any way, shape or form. It is unfair to evaluate these candidates without a proper evaluation, a medical one, which I have not done. I have only done on past behavior, past childhoods and also current behavior. 
So all the sources will be in the description below for you to make up your own mind. But what other psychological tendencies do you see from Hillary and Trump that I did not mention in this video? Comment in the video below. Thank you again so much for watching. Subscribe, check out Change Media University if you want to join us on the front lines, a full online college that teaches you how to be a real journalist in this day and age. High school students get it for free. Subscribe, join us on the front lines. Thank you again so much for watching. YouTube.com forward slash we are change.